thank you. Projectors never work is just a thing that I've learned over the years. Uh, my name's Eric. Uh, I'll give a talk today, Hacking Cars with Python. My background, I do a lot of work on embedded systems in the past, a lot of stuff in the automotive industry and in automotive security. Uh, ask me more later if you're curious about that stuff. But the main theme here is cars are computers. They're just computers where the input devices are like pedals and steering wheels, and the output devices are like you know torque going to your wheels and propelling you forward. Uh, why did we make cars into computers? This might not seem like a great idea for a number of reasons. But there's a safety component here. So we now have airbags. We have ABS. These actually make people safer. They reduce uh, the likelihood of collisions as well as the damage to people whenever they actually crash. We have advanced features, so things that the industry calls ADAS, or Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, which is like the Tesla autopilot kind of thing, the active radar, following cars. So that also you know, reduces accidents and makes things safer except for when people use them wrong, but we won't get into that. Uh, we have emissions, and this is in bold because this is like the real reason that everyone started using electronic uh, control units and vehicles. They had to meet these emissions targets, and to do that, they had to make engines more complex. To do that, they wrote software for them. But cars are also networks because they have a lot of controllers in them nowadays. This is an incredibly simplified vehicle network, but this is some controllers that probably are in any car that you'd be in nowadays. A uh, modern vehicle can have up to a hundred different controllers and they're all talking to each other and that internal network is totally trusted. So you send a message on it and everyone's like, yeah, cool, you must be the engine because you sent the engine message. Gotcha. <laughs> Which is super fun. Uh, now, here's some sample controllers. You have suspension, the instrument panel, so you're dials in front of you, uh, your engine controller, which is at the back of this car because it's a sports car, I guess, uh, HVAC, seat positions. On some vehicles, every door handle has a con controller in it, like a 16-bit microcontroller. Uh, and these are all connected using a CAN bus. What is that? Controller area network. It's a low-cost system for, or network for connecting these controllers. Ethernet, you need a lot of hardware, you need you know, extra stuff. CAN, it's right on the microcontroller. You toss a really cheap transceiver IC there. You use two cheap pieces of wire twisted together, and boom, you have a data connection. And the automotive industry loves cheap things. So this is one of the big reasons they used it. It's also fast. It's uh, reliable. It does like CRCs for you and lots of other nice stuff. So a typical network you see in a vehicle has these tiers. You'll have like a high-speed bus and a low-speed bus, and they'll communicate through different controllers. There's a few different kinds of CAN, but yeah, they're all similar. I get asked this a lot. Should I hack my car? And like with some caveats, yes. Uh, why? <laughs> um, you understand more about how cars work. You rely on this every day to like get you places and not kill you. So it's kind of nice to understand if you're kind of the hacker mindset. That's, that's a cool thing to look into. Uh, you can do a diagnostics, which saves you money, which is a pretty good incentive, in my opinion. And a good example here, you read out some fault codes, you find out that some part's broken, you go replace that part, you save yourself like the $80 to get the uh, dealership to scan it, plus the upsell on that part, plus the labor to change it. So if you know what you're doing, it's actually not that hard. You can build your own third-party devices that let you interface with the vehicle and like log data, maybe, or know, show you GPS on a different device, whatever it is. I've seen some people do some pretty cool stuff. And you can get into this automotive security world that's starting to emerge as we see more connected vehicles and start to care more about that. Uh, you can also watt your ride if you so care to. Uh, how do you do this? Well, the low cost option are these suckers, the Elm 327 dongles. You can buy them on Amazon for like $10 right now. They come in Bluetooth or USB. They're totally insecure and sometimes they're really sketchy. You can get them from eBay for like two bucks. Don't buy those ones. Uh, but what this will do is it'll let you do the very simple OBD standard diagnostics, which is enough to start to like get data out of your car and actually read and clear fault codes. And, you know, Bluetooth, you can like hook up your laptop, no wires, and have a good time. Warning, the pin code for all of them is 0000 or 1234. And if you see an OBD2 device on your phone, you probably can connect to it with one of those two pins. So what else? Well, I end up building a device called CanTac. This is very simply a CAN bus to USB interface because my MacBook Pro, well, the next one won't even have like any ports, but this one <laughs> doesn't have CAN bus on it. So I needed this tool. So now we're going to do it with Python. Uh, basically, I have this Pivot project. It's a Python Vehicle Interface Toolkit. 
abstracts away your hardware interfaces so you can buy different tools and work with them. It deals with async stuff for you and it implements some protocols. Uh, yeah, car plus Python equals woo. Uh, so today it supports the CanTac tool. It supports anything that does socket can on Linux, which I can't get into right now, but ask me later. And it does, you know, standard can, OBD stuff, ISO TP and ISO 14229, kinda, which is the more proprietary diagnostics that automakers use to like flash the firmware on your engine. And it's got some utilities for doing async stuff and logging. If you want to do a denial of service attack on a car, it's really easy. <laughs> uh, it fits on a slide. Basically, you send a frame with ID zero really, really fast, and that is the highest priority frame. The car freaks out and all the fault codes go on. Yeah, that works. Don't try it because you'll set a lot of fault codes. Fortunately, you can clear them by sending a special frame, and it won't cost you a lot of money to turn the light off, which is nice. This is a simple example. There are fancier diagnostics, but that will actually work on any CAN-enabled vehicle. Next step, I want to support the cheapo OBD dongles because they're cheap and more devices as we need to. Uh, more support for ISO 14229, J1939, can open whatever other products or protocols are being used. Today it's that. We're seeing more Ethernet stuff come up in automotive, so hopefully that soon. Uh, better tooling for IPython, because it's really nice to just tab complete your diagnostic requests and then like have them all pop up. Uh, and graphical user interfaces, and like better docs and snippets as every project needs. Uh, that was my whirlwind tour through this, because uh, we had some issues, but I'll be around today and tomorrow if you want to talk about cars, uh, and otherwise you can find me there, you can find all the code at GitHub, Linklayer, and opengarages.com is really cool, so go check them out. They do open source car stuff. Thank you. <laughs>